how is everybody doing in this time? I'm just so happy that uh, you're here, that I get to talk with you again. Um, I feel like I have a public announcement for the church right now. And I feel like it's something that um, I need to be reminded of, you need to be reminded of. If you're not a believer yet, just hang on because you're going to be one today if you want to be. Just hang on to this. But this is, this is for all the believers. Let's stop trying to get off the planet. Right? Don't ask for Jesus to come home and come get us and come in the sky. The earth is not ready for Jesus to come back yet. He's not coming back for a quarter of the population. He's coming back for most of us, okay? So start to pray for the harvest. Start to pray for the kingdom of heaven to actually come to the earth right now. I know it's a scary time. And if you're a believer, it's time to act like one. I'm talking to myself too. I'm talking to all of us right now. It's time to stir up the gifts of God that is within us. It's time to, to shake off all those talents and start to multiply them on the earth. And if you're, you know, if you know that God is in you, that you are born again, that you have the Holy Spirit living in you, it's time to start to cry out for the kingdom of heaven to invade the kingdom of the earth. Amen. And it's this is what I'm talking about. I'm saying it is time for the church to rise up in peace, the power of peace. I want to I want to talk to you and I want to remind myself about the power that Jesus gave us, which is the power of peace. You know, in Isaiah it says that Jesus is the prince of peace. It means that he reigns, he has power and and his one of his powers is peace. And so what does peace look like? Does peace just mean, oh, I just get along with everybody and I just make everybody happy? No, it says, blessed are the peacemakers for they are the children of God. Blessed are the peacemakers. See, God has called us to actually bring peace and make peace on the earth. It talks about his children having peace throughout the whole Bible, all the Bible, Old Testament and New Testament. It talks about the power of our peace. And so when Jesus said we can do greater things than him, remember when he was leaving, he said, even greater things than these you will do because I'm leaving you so that the Holy Spirit can come and live in every one of you. And so I'm reminded today of this scripture and it's Remember when Jesus did all these amazing miracles and then he's like, let us go over to the other side and let us um, get in our boats and let us go to the other side of this, of the of um, Galilee. And it says, and a great windstorm arose and the waves beat into the boat so that it was already filling. But he was in the stern asleep on a pillow. And they awoke him and said to him, teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? It wasn't that it was just a little bit of wind, y'all. They knew that this was a, a, a ship uh, sinker. They knew, these were fishermen. They knew the sea. They knew that this was trouble. They knew they were in a lot of trouble. And here Jesus was asleep. And you know, sometimes we think that Jesus is asleep in our trouble too, but he was also showing, listen, I'm okay you are going to be okay. I'm in your ship. Like, relax. It's okay. I'm just still at rest over here, you know? And uh, I would like to think that I would be the person that would be like, look at Jesus is chill. So I'm okay too. No, I'd be like these guys. I'd be like, don't you care about the world right now? Don't you care about the craziness that's happening all around us? Where are you? What are you doing? You know, so then it says, then he arose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. But he said to them, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said to one another, who can this be that even the wind and the sea obey him? You know, it talks about how we are now, you know, it's a Jesus is our example on the earth. And you know, it says when they asked Jesus, they said, Jesus, show us how to pray. He said, pray like this. You know, we call it the Father's Prayer, but really it was the disciples' prayer. And he said, this is how you pray. First of all, you give honor to the Father because he is where everything comes from. And then he says, let your kingdom come and let your will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. He never taught the disciples or us, his followers, to pray to get out to leave the earth. 
let's get out of here. Let's just leave it to the devil and get out of here. He said, no, you ask for the kingdom of heaven to come into earth. You ask for heaven's will to be released on the earth. That's our job. That is our birthright. That is our inheritance to use the authority that Jesus gave to say, we want the kingdom of heaven to come into this earth. We want to see peace, lasting peace, peace that actually brings change and a difference. It says, blessed are the peacemakers. We make peace. We don't just uh, live in peace. We're supposed to make peace. I mean, that's powerful. We are the kingdom. And it says in um, Romans 16, 20, it says the God of peace, that's Jesus, the God of peace will soon crush Satan under your feet. The grace of the Lord Jesus be in you. It's the God of peace that crushes Satan. You know, sometimes we think it's it's a violent act or whatever, but the power of peace is, is so powerful. It's calmed a whole sea. It changed a whole weather system. You know, and Jesus was trying to show them, why are you not believing me? You just saw me feed 5,000 people and you're still questioning if you're gonna die with me in your boat, <laughs> you know? And sometimes we feel that way, don't we? We're like, Lord, we've seen all the things you've done for us. I mean, you've forgiven me of all my sins. I'm, I'm free, you know, I'm never gonna go to hell. I'm always gonna be in heaven with you when I pass on. But he wants more for us than just, um, you know, fireproofing. He wants us to understand that we are peacemakers, that we actually bring the kingdom of peace everywhere that we go. And we have to know the power that we have in this peacemaking. And Matthew says, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. And you know what, if we find ourselves at the end of the age, we are not ready yet. So pray for harvest, pray for souls, pray for the releasing of peace on the earth so that men can be coming to the Lord to find peace. If you find yourself right now and you know God and you're not at peace, or let's say you don't know God, you don't know this Jesus that brings and rules in peace. He wants to know you to know him today. And you know, he, he came, he died, he died on the cross. And it says that he died for our peace. One of the things he died for is peace, that we could have the peace that he talked on through the whole Bible. And if you wanna know Jesus today, it's a great exchange, your life for his life. He wants you to see him so clearly as your Prince of Peace, as your ruling, reigning Prince of Peace. And you say, Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the cross. I thank you that Jesus died for my sin that he cleanses me and makes me whole again, that he heals my heart, heals my body, heals my soul, heals my mind, and I receive your delivering power. And I say, Jesus, come and be the Lord, come and be the boss of my life. I will follow you for the rest of my days. And you know, it says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you will be saved. And let's say you know Jesus, but you still find yourself in turmoil. You're not sure about what's going on right now. You're you're afraid. You feel like the you know that that you're just in this whirlwind. And I feel that way too, very much so, in so many parts of the, that's happening right now. And and fear can come because fear has just been released on the earth. And you know we remind ourselves today that we are the authority on the earth to rule and reign, it says in Revelations, with God, prince, as priests and royal priesthood, with Him, ruling with Him, with the authority that He gave us to go into the world and to tell others what He has commanded. And one of the things that He commanded was to be a peacemaker, to bring the kingdom of heaven and release it into the earth. So everywhere you go, be purposeful. 
Be purposeful, children of God, to release peace everywhere that you go. And peace is something that comes even in the turmoil to give you that just inner calm, the knowing and the trusting that God has this. That when we hear His voice, we actually follow Him, we obey Him, and we also have peace. But we give peace to others. It's not just for us. We're not trying to get off this planet. We are actually saying, Lord, you come and invade. You come and take this planet for your purposes. Let your will be done. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. That is our responsibility as believers. So let's start to release that on the earth in a greater measure. Be purposeful everywhere you go today, everywhere you go tomorrow, and until Jesus comes again, be a peacemaker in this time. And I bless you in the name of Jesus with the power of peace, with that you would really see that God, Jesus, is reigning in you, that you are allowing him to be the Lord of your life and say, Lord, you are the Prince of Peace. I will release peace with you, not only for my own home, but for the homes around me, for the world around me. I will release peace for you. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Thanks, guys. Have a good week. We'll see you next time.